Hey, good morning. How's everybody doing? Uh, what we're looking at now in our next little subject is chemical basis of life. Um, one of the big things that we know is that all matter, we're going to find out that all matter in our physical world um, are made up of atoms, whether you're living or non-living. So we're just into a general idea that the atoms are the smallest unit of matter. Now, of course, you can go into and start to break down the atoms, but let's just stay at atoms. Um, we do find this with the biology, since we are talking about biology, that living organisms share some of the same chemistry patterns. Um, and I usually try to remember the old C-H-O-N, con, C-H-O-N, that's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Those will be big and important atoms when it comes to living organisms. I'm not going to find much plutonium, uh, beryllium, mercury, I'm not, I'm not, but carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, living, you're going to have a lot of that, as we know. So they share the same chemistry patterns. Now, we've got to throw out this word elements. What's an element? They're the fundamental building blocks of matter, more than 100 elements in our physical world. An element is a type of atom that is constructed in a certain way. And we'll find about the construction a little bit later. We'll, we'll talk about the parts. And um, if you have so many of these parts and those parts and these parts, and they're in a, they'll be in a special arrangement because they'll be held together, then we say, okay, well, that's the element, let's say oxygen, or that's the element nitrogen. And when you get around and start counting them, the parts, the number of parts are important and how they are arranged becomes critical as well for them to be stable. I think 100 elements is a good number. Uh, we got some man-made elements out there nowadays. Maybe we get up to 116, who knows. Uh, atoms are the smallest unit of matter. They have chemical and physical properties. So when you arrange the parts in certain ways, they have different abilities and behaviors uh, that they possess. I, I don't think it takes you a whole, whole lot to, to start thinking about things like lead. Oh, that's heavy. Uh, oxygen, wow, that's light. Well, hold on, they're both made out of atoms, but the atom structure and arrangement is different. And you're going, huh, okay. Hey, one's a gas, one's a solid. There's some, uh, there's some properties. And so each element will have its own properties um, as far as our physical world goes. And that affects its behavior. When we get into the atomic structure, do you see this down here? Let, let's go ahead and talk about this structure. So we're gonna go into an atom, and what we'll find, we'll find a center. And in the center, we're gonna use the word nucleus. Uh, so that's the nucleus of an atom. Don't let nucleus trip you up with nucleus of a cell. Oops, they're both named the same thing, but stay away from that. There's a nucleus in a cell, and there's a nucleus in an atom. Two different, um, two different items, really. Two different items. In the nucleus, we've got the protons, and we have got the neutrons. And outside the nucleus, we've got electrons. Now, what's interesting here, the protons are positive, the neutrons are neutral, and the electrons are negative. That's kind of interesting. And when we go on to the next little slide here, another important thing to keep in mind, we're talking about these atoms, is when we look at, okay, what has more mass than the other? Well, you find the proton and the neutrons about the same, about the same. But when you see an electron, it is one eight one one eighteen hundredth of the proton mass if the proton equals a neutron, okay. So boy, this guy, this little electron, as far as uh, size and mass go, hmm, minuscule, minuscule, dust-like, dust-like, see? But the interesting thing is that it's got a negative charge, number one, number two, it's at high speed. Hold on, can you make up for stuff with high, I mean, I'm holding a bullet in my hand, no big deal, got a bullet in my hand, right? Bam, if it's coming from a gun, that little bullet was just nothing in my hand with its speed is all of a sudden totally destructive. Just that, that energy, that energy is worth something. Remember that, the energy is worth something. Keep that in mind. Uh, and, and what you will find with these atoms is that the center, the nucleus, you really don't mess with that much. It, it really is not a place where you can go interchange parts, make new relationships. But with the electrons, that's where you have a little wiggle room 
for the atoms to actually get together and co-mingle and co-mingle. Now let's take a look at this thing. The electron arrangement on the outside, they're spinning, they're in a cloud, high speed, is important to the activity of the atom when bonding with other atoms. Um, and um, so I, I drew this beautiful little picture and you can see, oh, that's a nice little atom and you can count up the little protons and neutrons and count up the number of electrons. And you could say, oh, well that would be, and I'm guessing, that would be an oxygen atom, let's say. And, uh, you know, and if you added some in the middle and add some on the outside, you may turn into a nitrogen uh, atom as well. Um, these, this arrangement, this arrangement is very important, especially the electron arrangement, very important when it comes to the possibilities of them building a relationship with other atoms to make. The next step after the atoms would be, of course, the, and is it up there, the molecule, yes, the molecule. So, a molecule is when you get a relationship between the atoms, you've moved away from kind of the singular and you're, you're now into a plural. And then when you get into a compound, you get these molecules and then they come together and bond with one another and have an attraction for stability with one another through uh, their electron arrangements. <coughs> and you end up with some stable new substances that weren't there before, um, but in collaboration with one another, those atoms will bond and they will be they'll be stable you know I mean they'll actually bond they, they don't mix they're not a slave. they bond they bond you know take hydrogen take oxygen do they like each other they apparently have a very nice relationship with each other their electrons get together H2O oh you need two hydrogen to every one oxygen and now you're starting to do water and uh, that's pretty straightforward um, in our study uh, we'll throw this in as well. These two words, one is an ionic bond or a covalent bond. Both of these are dealing with electrons. In the one, you share the electrons, and in the other, you transfer electrons. So, um, and, and this becomes fairly important because if you transfer electrons, if I pass over to yonder a negative electron, hey, you're negative, I'm missing an electron overall, being an atom, I'm positive. I'm going to behave in a certain way. Uh, I will have changed. I will have changed from my same atom that it is overall neutral. So, huh? You know, you know what happened? Some energy. Some energy is getting released. Some energy is getting passed. I'm giving it up. It's gaining. Uh, that's important, especially when you're looking at how to manipulate these atoms to make these compounds. And of course, compounds um, can be very, very useful. Just think about gasoline. We like that, don't we? Think about wood. Oh, we like that too. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, now, bonds. I did say something about bonds. Bonds have an energy that may be available. And why do I bring that up? Because guess where us as living organisms, we get our energy? We break down these bonds. We don't go so much into the center of the nucleus of the atoms and break that down. That would be like radioactive. That ain't gonna work. No, we're biological. But we can move the electrons from one to the other. We can take atoms and, 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 and with a little electron manipulation, we can break bonds and then release energy. We can do, we can do the difference too, is we can bring atoms together and use energy to get them to bond up so we can get their energy later. So we can store, or we can release. There's a couple great words for that, and I, I wanna say anabolic, and catabolic. Those are your words, sorta. They'll be on word of the day for you a little bit later. Um, your book then goes into acids and base. You know what an acid is. You know, the thing you take, stick your finger and you bring it back, all it is is dissolved bone, that's an acid. Now a base, a base could also burn you real bad, but what is it? What is it? What's the difference? Well, here it is. If you are an acid, you've released the hydrogen ions in water. So you have a substance that can release hydrogen ions. You know, a hydrogen, when you look at a hydrogen, very simple atom, what is it? One, I want to say one proton and one electron. So, I mean, it's like simple. Uh, there's not much to it. Um, and, you know, if you throw away the electron, guess what? It's a hydrogen ion. It's plus. Uh, a base will be different. You release OH. See how the H and the OH, the OH, that would be water altogether. 
but if you have more OH ions in water, you will be a base. Last but not least, you just heard the bell. I heard the bell. Kids are going to be coming in in a minute. We have a pH scale, which starts at 0, runs through 14, right in the middle is 7. If you get a number, here come announcements, listen to this. Front office kids, you know they got to go. Probably checking out. Maybe mama brought by their little lunch money. Who knows? But um, look, right there, seven is distilled water. And then if you get a number of uh, substances pH that is greater than seven, it'll be called a base. If it's less than seven, it'll be called an acid. And so, you know, this is just the first little bit that we're going to do. And so I thought I would give it to you in a nice, mm, eatable chunk. Thank you so much.